Bohr's theory of hydrogen atom. This is hydrogen atom here. Electron is moving around proton in circular orbit of radius r. Hydrogen atom is 1h1. So it has one proton and one electron. Okay, now what is the force of attraction between nucleus and electron? It is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e into e by r square. Formula is formula for forces between two charged particles k q1 q2 by r square. So q1 and q2 both are equal to e. So the formula for electrostatic force of attraction is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r square. Now this electron is moving in circular orbit of 3D R, so there is centripetal force acting on it. Centripetal force is given by mv square by r. V is the velocity of the electron and r is the radius of the orbit. Now this force of attraction is providing the necessary centripetal force to the electron. So we equate Fe and Fc. Equating Fe and Fc we get value of mv square. Cut r from here and find out the value of mv square. Pause the video and solve the steps. Now from, from Bohr's quantization condition, mvr is equal to nh by 2 by Bohr's quantization condition is Bohr tell, told that uh, not all the radii are possible, not all the radii of the uh, orbits are possible, only those. He said that electrons can revolve around the nucleus in those circular orbits in which angular momentum of electron is integral multiple of h by 2 pi. Angular momentum is mvr, it is integral multiple of h by 2 pi. So from here, we write this expression and find out value of v. Now what we do, we put the value of v in equation 3, this value in this equation. Put it and you get the value of r. Solve it and you will get r. From here you can see that everything is constant here except m. 4 pi epsilon naught is constant. 2 pi e value of e mass of electron Planck's constant. All are constant. It depends upon r. It is proportional to n square. So I can say that for hydrogen atom the radius increase in the ratio of this it is directly proportional to n square. So for ground state, n is 1. For first excited state, n is 2. For third, the second excited state, n is 3. So the radii is increasing in the ratio of 1 is to 4 is to 9 and so on. The radius for nth orbit of hydrogen like atom. Hydrogen like atom means the atom which has one electron in, in its valence shell. For example, for example, H E positive, helium positive. Helium has two electron. It has two electron in its shell. So one positive means it is giving one electron and there is one electron in its valence shell. So it is hydrogen light. Another example, lithium two positive. It has three electrons. If, if it will give two, it will have one electron in its valence shell. So it is hydrogen light atom. So for that, the radius formula is this. We put the value of Z here. For, for hydrogen, Z is 1. For helium, put Z is equal to 2 and you will get the radius for helium. You can even derive this formula. If we, you can take this to be ZE, charge on the nucleus to be ZE. We can find, derive this general formula. Take the charge on the nucleus to be ZE and electron is moving around it. So you will get this formula. Okay. Now from here, I can see that Rn is directly proportional to n square by z. Remember this thing, this is very important. Rn is equal to n square by z. Now, to find out value of v, what we do, this formula of r, this formula of r, put it back in this equation, in this equation of v. Put it here and you will get the value of the formula for velocity, put it here, solve it and you will see that it is inversely proportional to n. Rest everything is constant and velocity is inversely proportional to n. Okay. And for hydrogen like atom, z is introduced here. For this, it is directly proportional to z by n. General formula of radius. Now consider hydrogen atom in ground state. 
हाइड्रोजन आता है रेड वन एंड ग्राउंड स्टेट मींस एन इज वन पुट द वैल्यू हियर एन वन रेड वन एंड द कांस्टेंट इफ आई सॉल्व इट इज इक्वल टू 0.53 एंगस्ट्रॉम दिस वैल्यू इज कॉल्ड बोवर्स रेडियस एंड यू कैन डायरेक्टली यूज दिस फार्मूला एज़ वेल instead of using this you can directly use this formula because we have already derived the value of the constant okay now coming to the question the radius of innermost orbit of hydrogen atom is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 what is the radius of n equal to 2 and n equal to 3 orbits what is the formula for the radius we know this now this we are talking about hydrogen atom so z is equal to 1 so a formula We use this thing only, this formula. Put n equal to two, and you get the radius. Put n equal to three, and you get this value. Okay, next question. When the electron orbiting in hydrogen atom in its ground state moves to the third excited state, show that how d probably wavelength associated with it will be affected. Pause the video and try the question first. Okay, so now what is T properly wavelength? It is h by p, and p is equal to m b. You can see that lambda, the d properly wavelength, is inversely proportional to the velocity of the electron, and velocity is dependent upon velocity is dependent upon n. How it depends? It is inversely proportional to n. Check the formula. Velocity of electron is inversely proportional to n. Now, how is n varying in this question? It is saying that electron, which is orbiting in ground state, moves to the third excited state. So n is increasing. N is one here, and n is equal to four here. So it is increasing. That means velocity is decreasing, and therefore lambda is increasing. Okay. Find out the wavelength of the electron orbiting in the ground state of hydrogen atom. This is the nucleus, and the electron is moving around this nucleus. Now we know that every moving particle has wave associated with it. So this electron will also have a wave associated with will have wave associated with it. So. This is suppose the radius is r. I can say that two pi r is equal to n lambda. Two pi r is a circumference of the orbit. It is equal to some integral multiple of lambda. It is some such wave associated. No, so such numerical value of a wave. How many waves? Four waves, five waves. So n lambda. Now put the values here, and you will be uh, able to find lambda. What is r? When n is one, ground state ka r humne bhi pada point five three and so. When n is one, z is one. Bohr's radius. Put all the values. Check the solution here. D Broglie relation is two pi r is equal to n lambda. Ground state has so n is one, and r we know point five three and so. We just did. Put all the values and you get the answer. Three point three two into ten to the power minus ten meter, or three point three two and so. Okay, now energy of electron. Let us first quickly just revise this. What we have done, we we have found the electrostatic force of attraction between nucleus and electron. Then we found the centripetal force on the electron. We equated both the expressions. Equate here. आपने n b square की value find की. Then from Bohr's quantization condition, you have found the value of V, and this V is here, right? And you found R. Then you have put R back in this expression, Bohr's quantization condition, and you have found the value of V. Okay? Now we have to find energy of the electron. So first of all, kinetic energy. You know, kinetic energy is half m v square. So m v square ka value to hume easy expression se mil gaya tha. M V square put it here. M V square. I put the value from that expression. We have got this. 
I'm again saying, please pause the video and solve the steps. Potential energy of electron orbiting around the nucleus. What is the formula for potential energy? Of the system, KQ1 P2 by R. Four square of the KQ1 P2 by R square. Potential energy is KQ1 P2 by R. So Q1 E and P2 is minus E by R. You get EP is equal to this potential energy and total energy. Add both the energy, then you get this. Now look from here that the total energy is negative of the kinetic energy. The total energy is negative of. What do you mean by this? That total energy is negative. That means the electron and nucleus form a bound system. The electron and nucleus form a bound system. Okay, now put the value of R in this expression. Put it, you will get this value. And from here, you can see that everything is constant except n squared. So E is inversely proportional to n squared. And value of this constant is 13.6. This is the formula for energy of the electron. And for hydrogen like atom, z square factor is introduced here. So z square by n is directly proportional to z square by n square, or you can write. This value, the value of constant is 13.6. So, you can value learn this value. If you have any question, you can put the value z, z2, and whichever shell is given, put that value and you can find the energy of the electron in that orbit for that atom. Okay, now this question. In the Rutherford scattering experiment, the distance of closest approach for alpha particle is d0. If alpha particle is replaced by proton, how much kinetic energy in comparison to alpha particle will it require to have the same distance of approach? Now, what is distance of approach? Now, if you remember Rutherford alpha scattering experiment, which is the alpha particle which is traveling towards the nucleus, it stops. As it approaches towards the nucleus, it stops at certain distance. R not. Entire kinetic energy, kinetic energy, this entire kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. It stops and it turns back. This distance after which it turns back is called the distance of closest approach. Okay, here we have D0 here, so we D0 he consider it. Now, the thing that alpha is replaced with proton, so kinetic energy will be changed by provided distance of approach same. But you have to alpha particle here. Alpha particle here, it went back, D0 distance thing went back. But the distance of closest approach D0 And then you have to send the proton. The proton is sent here, and it will be D0 distance. Here, it will be position here, and it went back. Now, kinetic energy is what is the kinetic energy? We have to compare the kinetic energy. So, this is the formula for the potential energy of alpha particle. K, Q1, Q2 by R. This is the formula of potential energy. R is D0. This is the distance of R. And here is the charge of the nucleus is Z. And charge on alpha particle is 2e. Take a one by four pi epsilon naught ze into 2e by d naught. This is the energy potential energy for the alpha particle. Now, what is the potential energy for, uh, for proton? It is ze into e by d naught. K ze into e. You want a nucleus for charge is ze or proton for charge e. You know this now. Alpha particle is. This 2 helium 2 He4 and this is 1 H1. So it has charge E and this has charge 2 E. Now divide it. We have to find out the ratio of the kinetic energy. And here the potential energy actually kinetic energy is equal to 2 you know, because the entire kinetic energy is converted into 
the potential energy. This is kinetic energy of photon and divide it, we get equal to 1 by t. So we say that the proton kinetic energy is half the kinetic energy of alpha particle. The kinetic energy of electron orbiting in the first excited state of hydrogen atom is 3.4 electron volt. Determine the B broccoli wavelength associated with it. B broccoli wavelength is H by P. And what is the relationship between momentum and kinetic energy? We already know. P is equal to 2 Me under root. Put all the values and find lambda. One thing you have to remember that H is in SI unit. We put the value in SI unit. M in SI unit we put karenge up. So energy ko aapko joule me convert karna karega. It's converted into joule. Multiply it by 1.6 into 10 to minus 19. Then multiply it by p square is equal to 2m into this value. Find out p and then find out lambda. This is a homework question. Please try it at home. I'll discuss in the next slide.